contestant number one, the contestant number one, please come forward and pick them up. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first question that contestant number pick. Our question is, define literate women and educated women. I repeat, define literate women and educated women. Thank you for the question. So, um, in my opinion, you know, there are lots of women out there and this question is very thought provoking if you think about it. Because as a woman, you can be differentiated into two types. So, let me start off with a quote, you know, the one that says, Knowledge is knowing that tomato is the fruit, but wisdom is knowing that you cannot use that tomato in a fruit salad. So, in that regard, you can uh, tell that a literate woman is someone who can write, or someone who can read the ABCs, but an educated woman is someone who knows her rights. There is a very huge difference, a stark contrast if you ask me. So, an educated woman is someone who knows her rights, who knows when to stand up for herself, someone who can empower some, uh, another woman, because as a theme says, empowering femininity. So an educated woman is someone who can empower the person next to her, and a literate woman is uh, someone who can simply write and speak, because a, li a literate woman can also be an uneducated woman, and an educated woman can also be an illiterate woman. So you have to understand the difference, and like I say, if you ask me, it's simply the quote, knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit, and wisdom is knowing that you cannot use that tomato in a fruit salad. Thank you. Contestant number two. Contestant number two. Contestant number two. Here's a question for you. How do you define women empowerment? How do you define women empowerment? Hello, Nukla. The question is very interesting because even our team is empowering femininity. So for me, as a child, I have, been, I have grown up with a personality that I don't give up. I'm a person who will face the problem and not run away from that. I'm a person who will fight for justice, I know my rights, and to be an empowered woman, the first thing we, have to be, we need to have is, mentally, we have to be very strong, we should be well aware, and also, we should be very responsible. And yes, like I have said before, in my introduction about Exodus 14, 14, this is my stand, and with these words, I always feel that I'm an empowered woman, and today, as I stay here in this stage, I'm celebrating myself and then I want to inspire my girls and also my brothers as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Contestant number two. Contestant <laughs> number three. Contestant number three, here is a question for you. What does being a modern woman mean to you? What does being a modern woman mean to you? Thank you so much for the question. Uh, according to me, being a modern woman means to know her responsibilities and also to stand for others as well. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number three. The next contestant we have is contestant number four. Contestant number four, can you come forward?
Here is the question for contestant number four. Do you think there is strength in femininity? If so, how? Do you think there is strength in femininity? If so, how? Yes, I think that there is strength in femininity because it is because of this femininity that we women are able to encourage and empower each other and we because of this femininity, we are able to bring out and influence many people. So I think, yes, there is a strength in femininity. Thank you. The next contestant we have is contestant number five. You may kindly come forward and pick the lock. Five. Your question is, as a young aspiring change maker, what is your vision for the future? As a young aspiring change maker, what is your vision for the future? My vision for the future is women's environment. I believe women are the strongest thing in the world and they should be given every opportunity to participate in politics, economics, education and society. One thing that women and girls are they don't want is but because of what society has labeled us to be. I want all the women to dream big and to achieve everything they truly believe in and to fight for everything you truly believe in. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number five. Contestant number six, you may kindly come forward and pick the law. So contestant number six, here's a question for you. What life lessons are you taking away from your participation in this? Patient. What life lessons are you taking away from your participation in this patient? Thank you for the question. The life lessons that I'll be taking from this participation is how to be patient, uh, how to do time management, how to be disciplined, and also how to work in unity. Thank you, that's my answer. The next condition is condition number seven. <laughs> Here's an interesting question. Condition number seven. Condition number seven. Your question is. Why should you win this Kenyan 2023? Why should you win this Kenyan 2023? I believe this is one of the most debated questions for each and every one of us, right? Yes. Okay. I want to win this Kenyan 2023 because there is a popular Kenyan saying that women, women and lady can be the empty handed and she will be living, she must be empty handed which means in our dialect many wives talking to me, they were talking to me this is what I felt I should change and then I want to win this because I'm a woman of change and this is what I want about change in our society that will be my answer, thank you and this is number eight. You stand ready and come forward. And this is number eight. Contestant number eight, your question is 
giving a choice, what would you choose? Heart or career? Why? As we all know, like uh, we both, uh, both heart and career is equally important uh, for every one of us. But if I were given a choice to choose heart or a career, I would choose heart. Because uh, whatever I want to do is, uh, whatever my heart wants, I really want to do. So, uh, like all the happiness, it comes from our heart. So I would choose heart. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number eight. Next, we have contestant number nine. You may kindly come forward and pick a lot. Contestant number nine, here is a question for you, contestant number nine. What are the qualities that make a woman of something? What are the qualities that make a woman of something? That's a very interesting question. Women should have a confidence. Women should fight for her rights. And women should always know the value of her life. And always try, and always try to to believe in herself. A woman should always believe in herself to be who she is. This is what you Thank you, contestant number nine. The last contestant we have is contestant number ten. Please come forward. Contestant number 10, contestant number 10, here is a question for you. What is something you know you do differently than most people? What is something you know you do differently than most people? What makes me uh, do different from others is I'm a very meticulous person. Everything I do, I do my best. And I am a very humble guy and I'm a very good listener. And also, I know how to deal with the emotions of the people and that makes me different from others. Thank you so much. Question number five, you have picked your child, Miss Ronley. Hello. Hi. How are you feeling today? I'm mean, great. Okay. Here's the question for you. Uh, with the high surge of drug abuse usage in our land, what would be your message towards the youth to overcome that illness? My message for the youth will be to choose life over death. And for those who are addicted to drugs, I want them to know that it is never too late. Overcoming drug addiction may be challenging, but there are tremendous amount of resources to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have contestant number eight. You have to your health, your dogs, Miss One Day. There's a question for you. How can one become a better asset to the society? 
how can one begin become a better asset to the society? One can become a better asset to the society by being responsible and confident and believe what he or she is doing. Thank you. That's my answer. Thank you, contestant number eight. Now we have contestant number eight. Ten. Contestant number ten. Sorry. Contestant number ten. You got your charge, Miss Ruth. Good evening, contestant number 10. Good evening, ma'am. My question to you is, what is the most pressing women issue of our tribe today? I repeat, what is the most pressing women issue of our tribe today? The women of our society that we are facing an issue is not believing in ourselves, like we have a low self-esteem, we're we think that we can't do this, and then we are comfort, we are staying comfort in our own zone. So I would like to encourage the woman to come out from her comfort zone and express what you believe in, and be a good influence to others, and also embracing and accepting all the flaws that you have, and also be kind and be a good influence to honor women too. Thank you so much. Thank you, contestant number 10. Next, we have contestant number 4. Contestant number four, you have picked Miss Ruth. Good evening, contestant number four. Good evening, Miss. My question to you is, how important is the mental health of women in pursuit of her life? I repeat, how important is the mental health of women in pursuit of her life? Thank you so much, Miss, for your question. Well, I think that mental health is a very common topic, but we, we tend to neglect it. It's because of our negligence that we the women or people in general, we fall into suicidal thoughts, anxiety and depression. So in order for us to build a healthy environment and build a healthy home, we need to take care of our mental health, especially of our women. Thank you. Thank you, contestant number four. Next, we have contestant number two. Contestant number two, you call Sir Arinkaba. Yes, our teachers are giving their best in educating we youth 
and our younger generation. But if I have to dream bigger, then I would like our government, our right leaders, to focus more on infrastructure and also to motivate them, encourage them in using their talent as well. So this is my big vision. It's just one percent of it. I have 99 percent. If I want more, I'm ready for it. Thank you so much. And that's the number one. You got Miss Ruth. Good evening, contestant number one. Your question is: What, according to you, is the main reason for lack of representation of women in local decision-making bodies? I repeat: What, according to you, is the main reason? For lack of representation of women in local decision-making bodies. Thank you for the question. So to understand that, uh, let me begin from the very start. So when you know, uh, if you go date back to your forefathers' time, so even from there, women have always been taken down. We have always compromised with the issues of men. So if you take the example of the Moro, so even there, or uh, as we say that only men are supposed to go there, you know. So it all dates back from the moment that our forefathers started planning all this up, because women were not given a place in society. We were just, you know, um, we never really actually had any place to sit on. We had to strive for it. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know, if you if you are really given it, then of course you will begin to. Better yourself, and then you will start questioning yourself. Oh, is this is all I'm worth. I need to work more. So that thing is not in us anymore, you know. And if you see women, I am not disregarding or disputing anyone here, but I'm just saying this is a matter of fact. We always look at someone, and then we think, oh, that person is always better than me. She's always better than me. I can never be like her. We look at someone, and then we diminish ourselves. If we look at ourselves as something smaller. But I think that if you really think about it, then going by the code, greater minds are always viewed by lesser minds. So you have to think great. You have to think big. You do not have to compromise yourself to any situation. You are always big, and the fact that divinity has made you a woman, a sense of a woman, is your self-right. It's your uh, everything that makes a woman is so peaceful. You think about it. So you always have to think great. You have to think farther beyond. You know, farther than beyond. You don't have to look only 10 minutes, meters. Apart from you, have to look into the future, and that is when we will start to see lots of women representation. Right now, the main issue we are facing is degrading ourselves after looking at someone else. That will be my answer. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the question round. Ready? Okay. The time starts now. All right. Keep supporting for your contestant, your favorite contestant. forward and read it out what you have written to the audience. And the students, you will also have to read uh, out the questions that you got and then uh, your answer as well. But you don't have to put uh, anything extra on that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, now here it goes. So hello everyone again. Hello. Really 
grateful to be here. So let me read out the question that I got. It was elaborate parenting cultural unity in the context of Eastern Nagas. So what I wrote is here to bring together seven tribes. That is, we are seven tribes because we have a new um, Eastern Naga tribe. So you know, Eastern tribes should stick as one, where we celebrate each other's culture, respect the values, and try to find common ground. So what I've written is. So, beautifully explained there, seven tribes of the Eastern Nava sticking together. How incredible would that be? To be able to conquer each other's and to celebrate each other's wins as our own and set the sights on conquering new milestones together, to bring together different viewpoints and comprehend the best answer and try to, you know, really find common ground, to appreciate each other even though we are not of the same tribe. I, th I guess that will be variety and cultural unity for me. Thank you. Thank you. And next. And the next we have contestant number contestant number eight. Okay. Uh, the question is elaborate parenting cultural unity in the context of Eastern Nagas. So this is the answer what I've written. As we all know, Eastern Nagaland comprised of seven tribes with different culture and tradition. So uh, we should all come in unity, even if we follow the different culture and traditions in uh, to maintain brotherhood among the seven tribes. Thank you. This is my answer. The next condition we have is condition number two. Once again, hello everyone. Hi. My question is, elaborate variety culture unity in the context of Eastern Nagas. To this question, my answer is unity and strength. So, to this, my special answer is variety culture, cultural unity is unity and strength together as we Eastern Naga. And lastly, the fight that Eastern Frontier is fighting, I strongly believe that we will win that. And then I fully support as a leader and a youth of tomorrow. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next, we have contestant number four. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, once again. Good evening. My question was, elaborate parenting cultural unity in context of Eastern Nagas. Parenting means influencing, promoting cultures. We can parent cultural unity by respecting and encouraging the cultural differences, norms, values, and traditions. As we, the Eastern Nagas, comprises of seven different tribes, we must work together in unity. Thank you. Thank you so much. The last contestant we have is contestant number 10. The question is, elaborate burying cultural unity in the context of Eastern Nagas. So to this question, I wrote, we have different cultures, beliefs, and traditions among Eastern Nagas, but despite our differences, let us all come together and work together in unity. We are all together, we can fight and achieve for what we are fighting for today, and we will win it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much all the young ladies, top five finalists. Thank you all so much for being passionate. Under the team Empowering Femininity, Miss Congeniality, Miss Congeniality goes to contestant number oh. Contestant number seven, Shijang from Bukul Village. Let's give a big round of applause for contestant number seven. And to do this honor, I call upon Miss Jong Kem Ke, Lady Wife of Three, 
D. Muju, Vice Principal Carmen Higher Secondary School, Nokla. Miss Jung Kepke, she was crowned as Miss Kim Jong Un's second runner of 2013. Congratulations, and this is number seven. So, any case, best rainbow Miss Kevin on 2023. Any case? Okay, for best rainbow Miss Kevin on 2023. I said, I just ran around, but I stepped number four. She's going to walk away 
which says from here certificate and a case price of Rs. 25,000 and a pair. Contestant number two. Contestant number one. Contestant number one. She's going to be the very king and our princess. To do the honor, I call upon Miss Chong Nyu from Chaplaman Village, who was the reigning queen of Miss Kim Nyu 2018. Thank you. 